All right, here is Loeb, a little desktop app that sits right on your computer. And I've been using it for various nefarious um, um, <laughs> data sets. <laughs> um, I, have, I have some weird collections. So you heard the story about me being a French teacher. I, I'm also a collector of a lot of um, strange and interesting objects. I have a collection of tarot cards. Um, I did like 781 images of these. I wanted to see, <laughs> I wanted to see whether there's an iconography that could be picked up by um, by the by the model. It was tricky because see, this is the emperor. It's a person sitting on a chair with a sort of a bishop's hat type look. Mm -hmm according to this one, this one, and this one. And then, you know, you show this image, is it really like, what does it look like? Is it an emperor? Um, and, but this one is quite different. So the iconography is just enough different that it kind of confused the model. So, you know, but still it said that it predicted 99% of the images correctly and 1% incorrectly. Now, admittedly, that's a small data set. So there's only, you know, 200, 200 images of the emperor. And you notice what I'm doing is I've, I've used my camera to train against the cards. So I'm just showing a card to a camera and it's picking up the images. I was I was actually going to, to to highlight that part. Like I'm I'm in no way, shape, or form um, an ML or AI person, um, but like that much I do know about training up a, a vision model, and it's something that I always um, I don't know if there's any like student hackers that, that that are watching this or not, but it's something I always implore teams when they're putting together their their hack project is if they are going to be doing something like that is make sure that you're doing it you know from like a lot of different lighting and a lot of different angles, and then in particular try and do it in the lighting where you're going to do the demo because it's it's so heartbreaking when you go to see um, uh, a team's project that they've worked like all weekend and so hard uh, building and uh, it winds up failing simply because you know the lighting is different or the background um, is is different um, because they just they didn't give it enough variety. So, yeah. yeah. So this is me just sitting. I think I was in another room. The lighting's pretty lousy. So. So, I mean, it's just a quick test, but um, so those are the labels and then you can train. And, you know, if I had my tarot cards, I could just hold it up to the camera and, and it would just, you know, check to see what it's looking at. And then you can use it. So this is the use part. And these are the, um, sorry, the images. So you can actually test images right within Lobe to see, like, if I had a, a shot of tarot, I would just drop it in here. Or I can use my camera and I would hold up the card and it would just test. Mm -hmm. and then this is the beauty of this thing, which is the export. So let's just pause here and figure out what we've got here. So we've got many different ways to export and to use your model. So there's Loeb Connect, which is you can host your model locally in Loeb, and it gives you a little URL on your local host. And then you can um, copy some code and, and use it against the predictions. There's only four possible predictions here. Um, and you can use this, like you could run this in Postman. Mm. It's, it's one way to do it. It's a very kind of interesting way. It's like, it's good for testing, but I can't imagine it would be super useful in production, my personal opinion. You need something that runs like not locally. <laughs> so, um, and then there's a TensorFlow.js. So you can use your model in a website. So I, um, I have done this with um, a lace making data set that I'll show you in a minute. So what you just do here is you just export. And it allows you to optimize or just export. And it's going to dump a whole bunch of files that basically looks like this. It gives you oh, some, here's your TFGS example. So that's the example. Okay. Yeah. And then, and go away, stop, 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 stop. OK. <laughs> and then there's an option of using a web app here, which sends you to this page, uh, which I believe is on GitHub. And it's a little React app that they've created. And I'll, I'll show you what this looks like in a minute. So this will take your files, and you can pop it right into this React app and use it. Awesome. I'm I'm laughing because the last commit was from um, uh, Bill, ba ba Bill Barnes. He's a, a friend of mine. We actually uh, used to work together on uh, on our last team. TypeScript tweaks looks like <laughs> yeah, and that's and and that's also fitting. Bill is Bill is is um, uh, a huge huge TypeScript person. Oh, cool. Yep. And the other thing that you can use, um, there's different ways of exporting. So you can use it with TensorFlow, straight up, you know, the regular TensorFlow, not TensorFlow JS. But you can use this within your Python app. That's very useful. 
you can use it with, it with Onyx. This is not Onyx JS, which is the Onyx runtime. So this would work in um, universal apps, which I believe is um, more of a .NET scenario. I'm a JavaScript person, so I would pick the TensorFlow JS one. Yeah. I'm yeah I I I I'm I'm same thing I'm I'm a web developer so <laughs> like, yep, yep. <laughs> I, I I don't know much for for doing uh, for doing desktop apps these days. Yeah, Core ML you could use in your um, iOS app very specific for iOS. Um, and then here's TensorFlow Lite. Now TensorFlow Lite is a thing of beauty and a joy forever because you can use it for um, Android and um, iOS apps and IoT applications because it's small. It just optimizes your model and it quantizes it, as I remember. I haven't used it for a little while, but you can use this um, in uh, cross-platform mobile apps, and that's a beautiful thing. Um, so that's something to just kind of watch for. Um, and then there's some starter projects that they give you. They give you this REST server that you can try. You can just fire it right up, uh, and that'll run everything locally. The React Web app is what I just um, mentioned. And then there's an iOS option and an Android option that you can try as well. 